Why not Wi-Fi? The question that every smart home user asks himself at one point or another. For the user, these are plug and play devices. And for the manufacturer, they are cheaper to develop, they're cleaner to market, and they're easier to sell. So what's the problem, if there is a problem at all? Today, we're talking through whether or not Wi-Fi devices are right for your home, or even right for the industry as a whole. We're asking, why not Wi-Fi? I'm Patrick Hunt, and I want you to like smart home tech as much as I do. Real solutions with Matter, Apple Home, and a little creativity. Weekly, I'll show you how small upgrades can make a big difference. Welcome. By no means is this question answered, and I'd really like to present it as a discussion. Uh, but for me, in an ideal world, I'd really like to draw a hard line between all of my smart home devices and everything else that walks through my front door. And that starts with infrastructure. There are enough active priority Wi-Fi devices that need to connect to a network. Phones, TVs, computers, tablets, your fridge, your washing machine, your dryer. And that's before we get into all the smart home tech that have no other option than Wi-Fi. Your thermostat, your cameras for the most part, your hubs for the most part, air purifiers, RoboVax, the device list on your Wi-Fi network can get really out of hand quickly. So which smart home category has the biggest potential of dominating your Wi-Fi device list? Lighting. And let's specifically talk about lighting fixtures here. Of course, smart switches are a great remedy for this issue, and it's not a solution to be overlooked. But for the sake of discussion, we're renting and we don't have any permission to make electrical changes, or we don't know how to install a smart switch or we don't wanna pay somebody to install a smart switch, whatever it might be. Wi-Fi lights are a dime a dozen with varying degrees of quality. And at the other end of the spectrum, and I think the reason why this conversation matters is it's also the segment with the most number of alternatives. Huge brands with Zigbee options and thread options, especially for standard size bulbs. And a lot of them are matter compatible, which is good, right? Let's look at the number of devices I would be adding to our network if I only bought Wi-Fi lights. In our basement alone, there's 10 retrofit recessed lights. That's just one room. Four bulbs in the dining room, six recessed lights in the kitchen, five more in the bathroom along with their switches. These actually are Wi-Fi. And then there's four bulbs in the ceiling fan in our bedroom. I'm at 30 devices and I didn't even count half the lights yet. Why would this be a problem? Outside of my desire to keep everything clean and organized underneath the hood. If you put a lot of time and a lot of money into your Wi-Fi network, maybe you create a dedicated IoT band for all those smart home devices, and you know far more than I do on how to optimize that network for 100 plus devices, and you're only watching this video to pounce on me in the comments, then there may be no problem, ever. But I didn't just describe most houses. Most houses are using the router from their internet provider. Most people aren't 192.168ing anything. And in that case, overloading your Wi-Fi network with 100 Wi-Fi bulbs not only will impact those devices themselves, but the priority Wi-Fi devices that I mentioned earlier, like phones and computers. And the worst part about it, you might be imagining this big catastrophic failure where the internet goes out and nothing works anymore. But that's not how it happens. It's connectivity issues that you can't quite pinpoint. Anomalies in devices that start happening more and more frequently. Slow loading speeds on your phone, for example, but just slow enough for you to say, hey, this is taking a minute, but then it loads real quick. Think of stubbing your toe or hitting your funny bone on something that seems like it was moved a half an inch to the left into your path of travel. That's what these issues feel like. There is, of course, a technical explanation for why this happens, but from a 30,000 foot view where Thread and Zigbee devices are actually sharing a space and the network is actually strengthened with the more devices that you add, Wi-Fi devices are competing for that same space and there are negative impacts with the more devices that you add. And this competition is just not ideal for your smart home stability. So in building your smart home, just be strategic. And it starts with infrastructure one way or another. Either optimize your Wi-Fi network for a smart home or how I've found a good balance, buy Thread and Zigbee devices where possible and fill in the gaps with Wi-Fi devices. There's absolutely nothing wrong with buying Wi-Fi devices here and there, especially when there's no alternative. A lot of the cool light fixtures just don't have alternatives, and that's part of the fun of having a smart home. So are you gonna stop buying those devices? 
No, just do it sparingly. Wi-Fi is the exception, not the rule. And lighting is a really great place to control the number of Wi-Fi devices in your smart home. So what about this conversation in the context of the industry as a whole? It's not as damning as you might have suspected that I think it is. I still stand behind matter, whether that's Thread or Wi-Fi. And Thread and Zigbee aren't perfect. So are all of these Wi-Fi devices really posing any more of a problem than the complexities of Thread or Zigbee? Probably not. But if you can start strategically from the beginning, then you're gonna be better off in the long run. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.